Hi everybody, um, thank you very much for coming on this webinar lecture. Uh, my name is Simon Ramshaw and I'm Managing Director of Aconia Lasers Limited and we're a subsidiary organization of Aconia Corporation who are based in Melbourne Beach, uh, Florida. Uh, we actually run the European and Middle Eastern Network and I noticed from the attendees there are quite a good spread uh, around the UK and around Europe so welcome all. Uh, and thank you for joining this webinar by Dr. Kurt Gare, which is titled Non-Thermal True Laser Bootcamp for Musculoskeletal Conditions to Quickly Boost Your Skills and Effectiveness. Um, we're going to be obviously assisting you at the end of the call. Um, as you'll see down the right hand side, there's a question and answers uh, part. Um, so feel free as we're going along to put as many questions in there as what you want. And then when Dr. Gare gets to the end of his, um, his lecture, uh, we'll be putting the questions across to him and I'm sure he'll answer to the best of his ability. Okay, across, uh, let's get right to it with Dr. Gare. He's got a very impressive resume. Um, he does a lot of work for Aconia Corporation across in the US and is a very well-respected chiropractor and also national and international speaker. He's the founder and CEO of Laser Chiropractic, which is, <clears throat> in a rather sunny part of America, down in San Diego, California. He's been using the lasers a long time, uh, 16 years now. <clears throat> and he's worked on uh, a lot of famous athletes across there in the US, a lot of Super Bowl champions, World Series champions, uh, Olympic gold medalists and, and world record holders. So he comes with the highest pedigree. He teaches doctors as well from all over the US and around the world uh, through the webinars and seminars. And um, he's featured in Dr. Isabella Wentz's documentary, The Thyroid Secret, and her New York Times bestselling book, Hashimoto's Protocol, which is for the non-thermal low-level laser methods he's created, which actually helps patients suffering from thyroid-related symptoms like brain fog, uh, fatigue, and more. And I know actually at least one uh, attendee on this call that has suffered from that pretty recently. Uh, he's also written articles uh, featured on the Hyperthyroid Mum website, or oh, sorry, Kirk, as you like to know it, mom website um, yeah. over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's a frequent guest on popular podcasts um, and shares how lasers can be used on conditions ranging from serious conditions like Parkinson's, ADHD, autism, traumatic brain injuries, uh, all the way to fun lasers for, for fat loss, sports enhancement, and brain enhancement. So I'm sure you'll all agree, it's a pretty damn impressive uh, resume. So without further ado, Dr. Gare, across to you. Thank you, Simon, and thank you guys out there for having me on the on the webinar today. I'm excited to share this information with you guys. I know a lot of you are new to lasers, and I remember what that was like for me uh, when I started with them back in 2004. And that's why I put this slide up here. Is like, how many of you feel excited but also overwhelmed with learning about lasers? It can be a really exciting but stressful time as you wonder, how am I going to implement this into practice, into working with my patients? What am I gonna charge for it? Um, is anybody gonna even want to use it? And the thing that I wanna show you in this is that it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Let's learn how to let the laser do the work. And with that, here's what Simon was talking about. I got featured in this particular documentary and also in this book because as word spread about what I was doing with the lasers, actually helping my wife with a um, severe case of Hashimoto's that wasn't being helped by traditional medicine, um, we were able to make some great changes with her and some other patients. So she had me in this book and also on her um, documentary and it spread around the world. That's how knowledge got uh, spread about what lasers can do for some of these, for support for autoimmune conditions. Later on, I'll show you this gentleman's story. This is Zach Shinnick. He was someone who came in as an athlete with some chronic injuries, uh, both for the low back and hamstrings. And not only were, able, were we able to use the laser to help him get over those injuries, but we also helped him run faster than he ever had before. And he was actually the fastest um, runner, uh, high school runner in the whole United States a few years ago when we were working with him. So I'm going to show you some basics of how you can use the lasers to do that. Because I want to, my goal with this webinar is to get you some ideas of things you can do tomorrow in practice or next week in practice. You can do some very complicated things with laser, or you can do some very simple things. And I want to show you some basic stuff to get started on here. 
also because of the things that I've done with the lasers word spread around, I got invited to work the Dodgers and Angels fantasy camp. So that's our major league baseball programs out here. And I got to work with some of the really famous guys who won the uh, the World Series in the 1970s and 80s, which is really exciting to get out there and use lasers on athletes to enhance their performance. And for those of you around the world who are tuning in, if you work with athletes, that is a fantastic group to generate a lot of referrals and a lot of business for you because they need to get better as fast as possible. They're interested in performance. They want to avoid surgeries and they want to avoid downtime. So once you work with one athlete and you get them fixed up, they tell all their friends, word spends to the coaches, and then the coaches start sending their athletes into you on a regular basis. Um, these are a couple of young kids I work with too. Uh, over here on the left, that's a kid who won the college um, national championship here. I've been working with him since he was in high school. Kid on the right was a high school player that I worked with. Uh, he's a pitcher and he would come in, not even just for entries, but on a regular basis for sports performance enhancement, which we'll show you how to do here, um, to help him throw the ball harder and to perform better. And he was taken seventh in our professional baseball draft this past year. So really exciting stuff you can do with lasers. I just wanna start you off with this. I wanna show you a testimonial from one of these athletes because these are the powerful things that occur. And I can tell you all this stuff over and over again, but I don't think anything resonates as much as when you have an actual patient tell you uh, what's gone on with them. So this athlete came in when he was in high school. And what he said is that he'd been treated for different injuries or simply for preventive maintenance. Now, how many of you would like to have people come in of their own accord without you trying to pitch them on the benefits of chiropractic? We all know that it's there, but sometimes people don't see the value. But with these athletes, when you use laser and combine it with chiropractic, they know that they're performing better. So he would come in for preventive maintenance and performance enhancement and adjustment since his sophomore year at Bishop Amat High School. That's one of the top sports high schools in, in the United States. He said he is now entering his junior year of college at Vanderbilt University, which was pretty much the number one uh, college baseball program in the United States. He says, where I continue to play baseball, I've had from as simple as sore muscles to pulled and strained muscles. Dr. Gares helped me heal so much faster with the laser treatments and protocols. And, and doctors, you guys are welcome. This is on my um, uh, on my site on Facebook, which is uh, uh, it's laser facebook.com backslash laser chiropractic. You can share any of these testimonials too with your patients and your followers and tell them you've learned the same methods that uh, were used on these athletes. Anyway, he said, I'm healing at least 50% quicker than I would be without the treatment. I also come in to see him for preventive maintenance, tune-ups and adjustments every time I come home from college. You'd actually fly out from the East Coast to the West Coast to see me when he'd get injured as well. I always like to have him treat the areas of constant use due to baseball. The tune-up treatments and adjustments help me perform better and help me recover quickly, quicker. And if you work with athletes, you know every athlete wants to perform better and recover quicker. I've been referring any athlete to him that complains. So these athletes build my business. I do no marketing at all. Everything is word of mouth uh, or sharing these testimonials. He said, I've been referring any athlete to him that complains of any type of injury or just for tune-ups to improve their performance. And we know as chiropractors, a lot of times we get put in a box of just people think of us as just the spine, low back and neck pain. But when you have the lasers and you use them, you open yourself up to being the expert now for shoulder injuries I love. Elbow injuries are fantastic. Knee, ankle, we do all these different things. So he sent me in a ton of these, uh, these players. He says, I have complete trust in what he does. I have seen results from day one and want to share that with other athletes. I honestly would love to have him with my teammates and I at Vanderbilt during baseball season. Even though we just won the College Baseball World Series, he would definitely help us take to another level of play with his treatments. And this is a key thing, whether it's a college athlete or going back here to this one, working with pros, I found that even with pro athletes, a lot of their trainers are stuck in the 1970s and 80s. They're still using outdated treatments that they're okay, but they don't do anything near what a laser does. When I was working the Dodgers and Angels fantasy camp, uh, there were trainers there who had been with the Dodgers organization for 25 years, the head trainer. By the middle of the week, no one was going to see him except for being taped or to have calluses shaved off. For treatment, everybody was seeing me. I had a line an hour long in the morning, an hour long during lunch. I'd work straight through it, and an hour long at the end of the day because all the athletes were coming in to see me. This gentleman over here on the right of the picture, um, he actually is the main strength and conditioning coordinator for the Chicago White Sox professional baseball team. And he was so excited with what I did that he wanted me to come and teach it to his his trainers as well, because he said even on the major league baseball circuit, they didn't know what we were doing with lasers. And he said this could really benefit them with performance enhancement and injury prevention and recovery as well. 
So let's go over to here. So my, I had a real struggling history. So I didn't start off, I wasn't one of these doctors who was successful right off the bat. I graduated in 1999, and for the first three years, I kind of had a rough go of it, trying to get patients to come in. We have a crazy insurance system out here, as you guys have probably heard, uh, in the United States, to where it's just, it's an absolute mess. So it's very hard to make a living. And then I got involved in something called the you know workers' comp treatment for injured workers, and it was doing really well until our governor came in. The actor Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually our governor here in California. And he came in and with the stroke of a pen completely changed the whole workers comp system to where it basically kind of carved all of us chiropractors out of it to where we couldn't really make a living it out of it anymore. And I realized that I needed to not depend on what was gonna be paid to me by an insurance company. I needed to do something that people wanted and that they would be not only willing to pay cash for, but they'd be excited to pay cash for it. So I decided I was gonna make my office insurance proof. And at the time we also went through some like a housing market crash out here in California and I was sharing office space with another chiropractor and we both took two very radically different approaches. Um, he decided to sit back and kind of do what he said to see what would happen. And he said, I, I, I want to wait and see. And I decided, no, we can't wait and see what's going to happen. We have to create our future. Kind of like right now with this whole COVID pandemic is you can sit back and see how things shake out, or you can make a plan to put yourself ahead of how things are going to change. That's where I like to put this quote from Captain Kirk of Star Trek. We change, we have to, or we spend the rest of our lives fighting the same battles. So I decided to change, and I decided at that time to take advantage of that downturn in 2004. And I went out and I heard Dr. Dan Murphy speak, and he showed all the research on lasers. And I, I thought lasers were, were new. I didn't know they'd been around since the 60s. He had been using them since the 1980s. He started showing us all the research that was on there. And here's what really blew my mind is they had this computerized muscle testing device where they could measure the strength, the pounds that we could uh, of resistance we could apply with our muscles. And it could find weaknesses on there. And I remember having a weakness on my right side that I wasn't aware of. They then lasered over my neck for a few minutes and then retested us with this computerized program. And I could see my muscle strength objectively change. And that's when I knew, boom, I've got to get a laser because I knew that with the amount it was going to cost me to get my first laser, literally if I had one patient a week pay $40 for that, a treatment or four patients pay $10 for it, it would pay for itself. And I could start to really reposition myself as being a doctor of the future. So I did that. I also took advantage of the downturn and secured a lease on an office space that was bigger and cheaper. I changed my whole way of doing things in the office. I changed the name of my practice. I became laser chiropractic at that time. Meanwhile, that doctor who decided to wait and see um, he went out of business. He's not even in chiropractic anymore, whereas we've thrived. And when we've had other recessions, we've actually been able to absorb the patients from other offices that went out of business. So one of the things I love about the lasers is they've made us recession proof. I already have patients. We're out here in Southern California. My office has been closed for six weeks because of the coronavirus. Um, we are already having patients flood me with messages asking, when are you open? I need to get in for that Zerona laser. I've gained so much weight while I've been on quarantine. I need to get in because I'm in a lot of pain from eating like a pig and from sitting on my butt. So this is not going to, this is going to protect us from suffering from the economic downturn. Now, if you're new to lasers, one of the things that can be overwhelming is you might get say Dr. Raruka's manual of different frequencies and treatments of what you can do. And you can sit there and you can get what we call the paralysis of analysis. And that's kind of where I was initially at first was that I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I've got this amazing machine, but I don't know how to use it. What I want to show you is that if you just even get the laser and get it on people, the laser can do the work itself and create a miracle. So this was my first laser miracle. I just bought the laser. I was still trying to figure out what I was doing with it. And this patient was brought in by her family and they asked me, the reason why I put this, um, Princess Leia quote up there is remember in Star Wars when R2-D2 shows the holographic image of her saying, help us, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope. You're our only hope. I've had a lot of patients over the years come in saying that to me. You're my last hope. You're my only hope. So what I tell them in these situations, when I have something I haven't worked on and they ask me, can laser help with this? I tell them this. I don't know but I know that this laser won't hurt you, so let's try it and see what happens and you tell me. So this is the story and you guys can see her uh, story on my YouTube channel. If you just search under Dr. Kirk Gare, you'll find my YouTube page and these testimonial videos, which you're also welcome to share. So Teresa came into my office when she was 16 and 
she got injured when she was on a in a homecoming parade for um, for our high schools out here. They have these events where for our big American football game, they'll have a thing where they have a, a a court, the king and queen, and she was a princess on it. And she was riding in the back of this truck. And the teacher thought it'd be funny to do a quick stop and start and stop and start and make the kids fly around in there. Well, Teresa was in high heels and her heel got caught in some of the slats in the back of the truck and she sprained her ankle. Look like no big deal. She goes to Kaiser, uh, which is a major uh, managed care facility out here in Southern California, and they diagnose her with an ankle sprain. And they tell her, you'll be fine in about four to six weeks. Just rest it, ice it, elevate it, and use these crutches. Well, four to six weeks come and go, and it turns into two months, three months, four months, and six months. She shows up at my office six months later, and her parents are in tears and they're asking me, can you help my daughter? I said, why, what's happening? They said, well, she had this ankle sprain. It's now been six months. And when Teresa came in, all of her pant legs on the right side were cut off at the mid thigh because she couldn't handle the material touching her skin. It would cause her nerves to fire and create a lot of pain. Her leg was cold from the mid thigh down. It was purplish red. Uh, she still was on crutches. She couldn't put any weight on her foot at all. When she would lie down, she said she couldn't handle the sheet being on it. And when she was at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, they told her, we don't have any treatment for this. This is reflex sympathetic dystrophy or complex regional pain syndrome. She said, we have no treatment. Basically, we're going to need to amputate your leg mid-thigh. So imagine here we have a 16-year-old girl being told that for a simple ankle sprain, she's going to need a mid-thigh amputation. So she was devastated at this possibility. So were her parents. So they asked me, can you do anything for her? I was new to laser. I said, I don't know. I've got this new laser. Let's just try it out and let's see what happens. So all I did was I stuck the laser on there and let the laser do the work. We treated her three times a week for the next several weeks. And what was amazing was she experienced a 100% resolution of symptoms and never had a recurrence just from what the laser did. And this shows that the laser affected her circulatory system. It actually will stimulate nitric oxide to improve blood flow. It also uh, stimulated the nervous system by you're stimulating stem cells. You're kind of recalibrating or resetting different nerve fibers there and it decreased inflammation so we saved her leg with the laser now what's amazing is when she went back to children's hospital they didn't give any credit to the laser they said oh you must have had a spontaneous recovery or we misdiagnosed you and her parents were just blown away they're like oh my god you were going to cut her leg off and you're saying it was a misdiagnosis they're like well you know it happens Regardless, Teresa became my receptionist uh, several years later, and so it was fantastic having her in the front share her story when patients would come in who were new to laser, and they weren't sure if this thing worked or not, and she'd say, well, let me tell you my story. It saved my leg. So you guys are welcome to share that. Again, it's youtube.com backslash Kirk Gare, and you can find those uh, videos on there. What was the protocol? People are gonna ask, well, what's the protocol you use? It's very simple. Um, I lasered over her lumbar spine. So anytime you're working on the arms or the legs, get the laser on the spine. If it's in the upper extremity, get some laser up on the neck. If it's the lower extremity, get some laser on the lower back. You're going to affect those nerve roots. I use a lot of times these basic frequencies. You can get very overwhelmed thinking, oh my God, what's the frequency for carpal tunnel? What's the frequency for lower back? What's the frequency for a strain or a sprain, et cetera? When you're starting out, you can never go wrong with using these basic frequencies of 9, 16, 42, and 53. Those are basic frequencies that you can get on, on virtually any condition, and you're going to get some improvements. You're going to get some improvements of decreasing inflammation, stimulating lymphatic drainage, dampening pain, and also helping in the nervous system to actually repair and to heal and stimulate some stem cells. So I lasered her over the, over the uh, area of involvement as well, the leg from the mid thigh down. And that's one of the wonderful things about Erconia lasers, since they have this line laser appearance, we could laser from her mid thigh down to her fit by just backing up the laser so the lines spread out over that whole area. With other lasers or LED devices, you can't do that. You have to get it right on the skin. So you have a very long treatment time going from area to area. I use these basic settings of 8, 25, 42, and 27, 20. So I use that for a lot of my neurological issues, whether it's peripheral neuropathies or something like this, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, or let's say you got carpal tunnel and you've got numbness and tingling in the hands. I'll also many times stack that as well. So we'll go over the spine and then also the area of involvement. Very, very simple. You guys can do that very quickly. Now, what I also like to do for extra effect is while the lasers apply, I will actually have the patient try to slowly move the foot through ranges of motions. Any motion for her would stimulate pain. So I would literally have her do micro movements and try to 
have her do things like spelling out the ABCs with her foot in a small area. Or I would do some sensory stimulation. So if you've got a patient with carpal tunnel or with some kind of numbness and tingling, you can take your pinwheel or you can take a cotton swab or a paper clip and go sharp and dull. You stimulate those nerves while the laser's on there as you're trying to stimulate the brain to reset or recalibrate those nerve pathways. Very simple. And as her condition started to improve, I then stacked other therapies. So if you've already got other devices like electric stimulation or ultrasound, you can actually stack them with your laser and make that that ultrasound or electric stimulation far more effective when you add laser on top of it than it is by itself. And that's also where now you're thinking if you've got a patient coming in and they're already paying for an adjustment and they're paying for ultrasound and they're paying for electric stimulation, you can add laser on top of that. Uh, many people will say, how much do you charge? Sometimes people start out only charging an extra $10 or $20. I charge a minimum of $45 extra for laser on this on the sessions. And 97% of the patients who come into my office pay for laser and are there because of laser. That's the main reason they are coming in for it. And for those of you, I know my mindset when I was first getting started with laser was like, I don't think people are gonna pay for it. People can't afford it. I work with a very lower and middle income um, group of patients. I'm just a little like two hours north of the Mexican border. I have a lot of undocumented um, migrant workers who are cash only. They have no insurance. They don't make a lot of money. And they are some of my biggest population of patients who come in and they pay cash for the laser. So um, we are have a good deal of our revenue comes from the laser. It is one of our highest price points um, things that we offer in the in the office because we have treatments go from $45 all the way up to $200 when we're doing the Zerona. So it's a good cash revenue on there. Now, so we've gotten that out of the way. Let me just go over here. Here's some key concepts I want you to understand because it can be a little overwhelming. We, we're, we got about another hour so that we're going to go through a lot of things and want you to understand how the lasers work. And I'm also going to show you different case studies because I find it very valuable to give an example of a case study so you can understand how to actually work through a particular patient in your office. But as we look at this, keep this in mind. The first thing you can always do with a laser is just get it on the tissue. Use those basic frequencies of 9, 16, 42 and 53 hertz. They can be used for almost any condition and never underestimate them. To improve the effectiveness of the laser, have the patient move the affected area in a range of motion that does not increase pain. So let's say we've got a shoulder injury, get the laser on there and have them do small movements. You can also have them do resistance against your manual resistance, almost like muscle tests, or you can have them do therapeutic bands or use weights, whether it's for a shoulder, for an elbow, a wrist, or a knee, having them activate the muscle while the laser's on there will make it more effective and will give that patient more of a wow experience. So you wanna stack other therapies at the same time. You can do electric muscle stimulation, ultrasound, myofascial release. When I have patients like athletes with balance exercises, I'll actually have them stand up and we'll use the laser on them on the back of the head going down the spine while they do balance and coordination exercises. Or my runners will do different gait kind of exercises on there. Let's say if you've had someone who's been in a, um, in, an, uh, in a car accident or had a concussion from football or from cricket or any kind of sport, and you wanna improve also their their eye hand coordination you can actually get the laser on their brain and have them do eye movements very very simple kind of things highly effective basically here's a key premise when you're thinking about laser whatever they are weak or bad at have them do it while the laser is applied and you can get a good result there so let's think about this. I love talking about lasers being disruptive technology. And I think especially now with this COVID pandemic, we see that the, that the current way that our healthcare systems around the world, whether it's uh, you know socialized medicine or it's our crazy system out here, still things are breaking down. They're not helping people in an optimal way. And we can really position ourselves with lasers to be that doctor of the future. And there are certain times in history where things came in as disruptive technology. So we had the horse and buggy was replaced by the automobile. And when the automobile first came out, were people open to it? They weren't. They were resistant to it. They're like, who wants that? Horse and buggy's fine. Why do you want to gas up? Why do you want to do that crazy thing? Telegraphs came out, and they were replaced by the telephone. Who still has a telegraph? No one does. Silent movies were replaced by talkies. And when the talkies first came out, the silent movie producers and actresses and actors said, ah, no one wants to go hear an actor talk. Think about this. 
Pagers were everywhere in the 1990s. Who still has one? Nobody does. Who went to, when was the last time you went to a Blockbuster or got a regular taxi? Um, we're seeing things like Uber, Amazon, and Netflix have disrupted the way traditional business is done. And really that's what we're gonna see with laser. I know you had Dr. Rob Silverman talking about the violet laser for what you can do to support the immune system and anti-inflammation. So we know that going forward, that's gonna be on people's minds. And there's a lot of power with lasers to help dampen inflammation, support the immune system, heal tissue, stimulate stem cells, et cetera. So you can position yourself with your lasers to really be that doctor of the future. Now, I love this slide because it really helps us to see how scientific knowledge passes through three stages. And the first stage, according to Schopenhauer, is ridicule. Or Arthur Clarke says, people say, it's completely impossible, don't waste my time. I saw this in 2004 when I first started using lasers. Uh, and even when I worked the Dodgers and Angels Fantasy Camp, I would bring in my lasers and those trainers who'd been in the business for you know 25 years ridiculed me. Hey, what kind of voodoo do you have there, doc? Ha ha, what kind of lotions and potions is that? How is that gonna work? They didn't see it as being valuable. They thought it was crazy. Then the next phase is violent opposition or it's possible but not worth doing. This happened to us out here in California with the Zerona laser, where when it first came out, it was working so well for non-surgical fat reduction that the cosmetic surgeons got threatened by it. So they unified and they got a bill passed here in California where we chiropractors couldn't have it in our office unless we had a full-time nurse on staff to oversee it, which what they wanted to do was they wanted to make it to where we couldn't make a profit at it because it was cutting into their profits. We fortunately, because Erconia got an over-the-counter clearance on that, they no longer can uh, restrict us. So now we are able to open it back up and have all these patients coming in for the non-surgical fat reduction. Now we've moved into the next phase where it's self-evident acceptance. You're seeing in the news, our crazy President Trump, you know, was kind of ridiculed for talking about disinfectants in the blood and for using some kind of strong light for therapy. But we're now seeing it's bringing to the forefront all these studies on ultraviolet light, on blue light, on red light, on lasers, being able to do things for the immune system, to do things for an antimicrobial effect as well. And now you see people saying, oh yeah, yeah, well, we said it was a good idea all along. So what you wanna do is get involved in it in the early phases where you can put yourself ahead of the curve because eventually it will catch up where it will be ubiquitous, it will be everywhere. I like to use this example. Let's look at how much time it takes to reach 100 million users worldwide. So we look at the telephone. Took over 70 years. Now, obviously, there are fewer people around too, so it's going to take longer. But the mobile phone took around 15 years to reach 100 million users. The internet took less than 10. iTunes took around seven. Facebook around five. The App Store less than five. WhatsApp, I know Simon, you love that one. Uh, it took around four years. Instagram around three. And Candy Crush, people love it, so it only took a year. So this is what I love about lasers: is people love it. Anytime they're in my office and they're getting it done, they take video of themselves, they post it on Instagram, TikTok, um, on Facebook, and it spreads around and other people get curious about it. So you can use this laser because it's high tech, people are interested in, and it will do marketing for you and generate a, a big share for you of this, of this growing trend. So you gotta ask yourself, which one are you? There's this wave that's occurring and you can either be this person who gets out in front of it and utilizes the change that's occurring that's being accelerated with COVID and Position yourself as the laser chiropractor or the laser doctor who has something no other chiropractor or doctor has, or you can wait and get churned up uh, like this other guy or like the doctor I used to share office space with. He waited too long and it's too late for him now. Now, if any of you guys want my slides too, just send me an email to Dr. at Gmail. I know I'm going through a lot of uh, information. I'm also going to have treatment protocols on here. You're probably going to want them. Send me a, uh, an email to Dr. at Gmail and type in UK MSK slides, and I'll send those out to you. Or I'm sure Simon can also get them out to you as well. Um, don't forget too. I also have a free Facebook group at Dr. Gare's Laser Therapy and Marketing Secrets. That's where I'll share these things in there. I'll share testimonials that you guys are welcome to share as well, because we want to make sure you guys around the world are successful. Now, let's get into this really quickly. Um, there are different types of light or laser therapy, and this can confuse people. Um, so there's light emitting diodes. Now, some people will try to claim that they are equal to lasers. That is not true. Anytime a laser and an LED are, are head to head, the laser always wins. LEDs do have an impact, but they are not as impactful as a laser. Here in the United States, there are 21 FDA clearances for true lasers. Out of them, 18 of them are for true lasers and 18 were gained by research done specifically on Erconia lasers. So other laser devices don't have the same volume of high level research studies that Erconia does. It's important to understand in the studies that Erconia does, 
LEDs are always the placebo. And while they have a, an, an impact, it's like 10% of what the impact is for a true laser. With the class two lasers, such as zirconia, they're the safest lasers that are out there. Some people will misresent class as, as saying, well, a higher class is more effective. That is not true. A higher class has more power, but also more risk. So when we look at all these clearances, they are 18 of the 21 are for the 635 or the 405 nanometer wavelength laser. These are also the only lasers that have clearances for chronic low back pain, chronic heel pain, and a head-to-toe FDA clearance for us here in the United States, which means you can safely put it anywhere on the body, and there's actually research to back up what you're doing. Other lasers don't have that. They're more cleared or have research for temporary relief in certain areas and not as much research on, on the head. <clears throat> Class three lasers have a little higher power rating, but are still less than 500 milliwatts. The bulk of all the research since the 1960s are on these two groups of lasers. Um, there's a few FDA clearances in that one. Then the newer ones are the class four lasers. There's not much research on them. Um, a lot of the companies try to sell them with the sizzling point of saying, it's more power so we can get the dosage in there faster. Um, but the problem is, is that there is a, there's a heating uh event that can occur and there's a risk of burns. There's also a risk, some studies suggest there's a risk of activation of precancerous cells with the class four lasers that you don't have that risk with Erconia class two lasers. Those class four lasers are also contraindicated on the head and the thyroid and um, they have to wear safety goggles at all time and the doctor has to be there all the time to supervise them. So it's important for you to understand that as we go through this, not all lasers are created equal, not all lasers are have research on them either. So with that, let's get into, before we get into case studies, I want you to basically understand what the lasers do, because if you understand what they do, you can see the unlimited uh, applications that you have for them. This is a great research study I highly recommend you read because it will tell you all of the pathways that laser stimulates, especially low-level laser. These are the proposed mechanisms of photobiomodulation or low-level light laser therapy. So one of the most important chromophores is the cytochrome C oxidase that's in the mitochondrial respiratory chain. So we know that when we get the laser on there, you're going to affect energy production. ATP is going to be increased. Let's look down here at the bottom. We don't have time to read all these things, but I want you to read the highlights. So you're gonna stimulate these reactive oxygen species, which that's also theorized as to be one of the reasons why laser has a positive impact for the immune system. You're also gonna have increased expression of genes related to protein synthesis. So that's one way you can start to heal more tissues. You get increased cell migration and proliferation. So whether it's a surface um, cut or like if we have uh, patients who have, like let's say they got in a motorcycle accident and they got a, a road rash, we'll use the laser on there and you can see the skin heal faster. If they had surgeries, we'll get the laser on there and you can see those surgical incisions heal faster. Um, you also have anti-inflammatory signaling. And let's think about even with COVID, one of the big problems is inflammation. Um, with a lot of chronic illnesses, inflammation is a problem. So when you get a laser on there, you can dampen inflammation. And what conditions are affected negatively by inflammation? Well, it's virtually everything, right? Whether it's neurodegeneration, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, uh, joint pains, inflammation is a factor in there. So this is why, again, your laser has a positive impact, not saying it's a treatment for all these things, but it has a positive impact on all these cases, even autoimmune cases. This is what I talked about in Dr. Isabella Wentz's um, Hashimoto's protocol, is that the laser can help to dampen inflammation, which is involved with so many autoimmunities, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis. It may not be a treatment for it, but it helps support patients who have it. You also support antioxidant enzymes. You support glutathione, which that's been shown to be very important for a proper immune response. Um, stem cells, progenitor cells appear to be particularly susceptible to laser therapy. So we know stem cells are a big buzzword out there and people are going for stem cell therapy. It can be expensive. Your laser can actually stimulate stem cells. As a matter of fact, when we get lasers on the brain, we do transcranial therapy. There's a lot of bone marrow in the, uh, in the uh, cranial bones and there's a lot of mesenchymal stem cells in there. So when you laser that cranium, you're gonna stimulate those mesenchymal stem cells and then they can transport via these tubules to the surface of the brain to help with brain recovery and brain repair. As we talk about brain, let's look at this. A big thing you get with laser is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So whether you're working with someone who has, like growing up I had ADD, ADHD, um, or whether you have a 
kid who needs some support for autism, or you've got a patient with Alzheimer's, or someone who's got a concussion from playing football and banging heads, or or getting a, in an auto accident and getting a concussion. Getting the laser on the brain will stimulate brain-derived neurotrophic factor that can help to stimulate repair. You can get it over the liver and stimulate hepatocyte growth factor. So we've seen this in my clinic where you've run before and after labs and we see changes to where those lab markers decrease after getting the, the laser and doing it over the liver. Naysayers will say, oh, well, it doesn't penetrate to that depth. Well, because we're using a, a, a laser to stimulate photobiochemical changes, it doesn't matter if we directly hit that tissue. We're creating systemic changes in the body that have an impact and we're able to show this with lab tests. We see inflammatory levels drop. We see proliferation stimulated. Even going back here at the bottom, you see uh, vascular endothelial cells. So there's a well-known cardiologist not far from my office. He's over in Pasadena, and he uses the laser on his cardiac patients because he's found that as he stimulates these vascular endothelial cells, and again, that's just getting the laser on there. It's not a complicated thing that these patients have improved blood vessels formation, they have improved oxygenation. When you think about COVID, they talk about pulse ox O2 can be low. We see that if we can diet these blood vessels, stimulate vascular endothelial cells and vascular endothelial growth factor, we can improve these, these blood vessels too. Mesenchymal and epidermal stem cells. So I see that my audio connection is lost. Okay, there we go, it's restored. Okay, so Let's go on to this next one. This is another fantastic um, study for you to look at. It's the role of low-level laser therapy in neurorehabilitation. So I want you to take a look at this because there are also some great diagrams that are in there, and this will go through multiple studies on how laser works to help you understand this. When you look at your lasers, your lasers can help with brain, stroke, traumatic brain injuries, TMJ disorders, dentistry and pain. So we'll have patients who will come in before they're gonna have a root canal or a deep cleaning, before and afterwards, and they'll get dramatic improvements. Mucositis, that was uh, mentioned in the, in the journal Cancer, talking about that they said that laser therapy uh, could be used for patients who are undergoing uh, chemotherapy to mitigate their side effects. Now, here in the United States, it's not FDA cleared for that, but that's what that journal is, uh, is recommending because they found such good results with those patients going through chemo. You can also use it for non-union fractures. I'll show you a case study in here of what I did with the patient who had that. Lateral epicondylitis, so when you have throwing athletes, they tend to get that a lot. Lateral and medial epicondylitis, carpal tunnel syndrome for workers, muscle fatigue, Achilles tendonitis, laser acupuncture, wound healing, arthritis, laser fat reduction, reduction of heart attack, neck pain, skin rejuvenation, uh, tinnitus, and hair regrowth. So these are all documented. And look, this, this study is over 10 years old. It just hasn't been out there very much. Now, what I want to show you here is this little slide to get you under, understand the systemic effects. So I recommend you guys take a look on Netflix at this documentary called The Iceman Cometh. And in The Iceman Cometh, there was this mobster named Richard Kukulinski, and he was a hitman for the mob. And what he would do is he'd get a, a contract on somebody and he would take them to dinner and he would either spill a little cyanide on their hand or he'd pour a little in their drink or on their food when they were off in the restroom. And he said what his favorite thing to do, it's really, really creepy, is to sit down and watch the light go out of their eyes right in front of him. He loved to watch him die right in front of him. Totally creepy. He claims to have killed over 200 mobsters. Now, why am I telling you about this? What does this have to do with lasers? Well, when you look at that cyanide, those few drops that he would get on his victim's wrist or in their food, what it would do was that little bit of cyanide would work by creating a systemic effect at cytochrome C oxidize in the mitochondria, and it would disrupt the electron transport chain. It actually stopped the ability of that chain to make ATP, which would lead to cardiac muscle death and neuron death. So basically, cytochrome C oxidase is the same place that your lasers impact to create a positive impact. So this is what I want you to understand is that if you have a patient that comes in, and let's say you're just lasering their elbow, while you get the bulk of the of the responses here, you are going to make some molecules like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, like stem cells, like nitric oxide, um, 
you know, like ATP that will not just stay here, but go global. And you're going to dampen inflammation and stimulate glutathione that again will go, go, go global. So many times as you get lasers on patients, you're going to have them come in and say, hey, doc, as you had this on me, you know, this has gotten better or that's gotten better. Really amazing stories on there that you're going to see in your office because of the systemic effect. Let's quickly go into some myth busters and fake news that lasers are experimental and haven't been around very long or really work. And then we're going to get into the case studies. More power and higher dosage gets better results and has more research. So this is a great study for you to look at too, laser therapy in Russia. This really just goes back and shows you that by 1974, the former Soviet Union down there at the bottom was using laser as standard state-sponsored medical care. Now, what I like about it is that they have all these decades of research ahead of us. What did they say was their preferred parameters? They said the best wavelength was 635 nanometers, which you'll see that is exactly what Erconia uses. That is why Erconia picked that wavelength is because they wanted to use the one that has the best uh, research behind it. They found that pulsing uh, worked really great. They liked using a pulse of 10,000 hertz. There are a lot of different uh, frequencies you can use for different things. A key thing here is they found that minimum energy is required for successful laser therapy techniques, and when you increase the power and exposure, it leads to an inhibitory effect. Now, I just want you to quickly look at this. They said that they were using it in OBGYN, gastro, cardio, dermatology, neurology, oncology, all these different kinds of branches. And their thing they said is until recently, laser therapy was ignored in some countries, especially Western Europe and the US. It was considered that its effectiveness was not proven. There was little reliable research or the mechanisms were not known. Their take on, as they said, that those negative studies were the results of the wrong set of parameters. Uh, the conclusions of those negative studies were quoted while some read only abstracts without scrutinizing a publication carefully. So that's important to understand. These lasers, although they may seem new, they've been around for, for since the 1960s and 70s. Now, this one, uh, this is one that I give out to my patients for them to understand how well laser works. And you see, this is clear back 20 years ago, showing that wound healing of animal and human body sport and traffic accident injuries using low-level laser therapy, that on average, that it accelerated wound healing by about 25 to 35%. They said the main advantages for laser therapy for post-operative sport and traffic-related injuries include prevention of side effects of drugs, significantly accelerated function recovery, earlier return to work, training, and sport competition compared to the control group of patients and a cost benefit. So fantastic things. I actually hand this out to my patients. A lot of times doctors say, well, how do we let patients know how well these works? You're welcome to take this slide and just do a printout and give it to your patients to help them understand, hey, this has been around for 20 years. This is not something brand new. It's not some new snake oil. Here, again, you'll have some people who will try to mislead you and say more power is always better. Here in the United States, there was a... Um, a, a comedy called Home Improvement, where this guy, uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor, would always try to fix things. And he would tell his assistant, Al, hey, Al, you know what this thing needs? It needs more power. Oh, 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 oh. And he would soup up this uh, device and he would overpower it and he would burn things up and blow it out. And that applies to lasers too. So this is a big study, 2016 shining a light on the head, photobiomodulation for brain disorders. And they found there's a biphasic dose response. What that means is this, a low dose of light or laser is beneficial, but when you raise that dose, it produces progressively less benefit until eventually a damaging effect can be produced at a very high light. And it's often said in this context that more does not mean more. Now, this is important for you doctors to understand, but also for patients, because if I have a patient come in, or if you have a patient come in, and they do five minutes of laser or 10 minutes and they get a great result. What is the natural tendency? They're going to ask for more. Well, can I do 20 minutes? Can I do 30 minutes? Can I do an hour? And that makes it very impractical for you to run your practice that way. And also it's not what gets the best results. So again, I have this study on hand to tell the patients, well, you know what? It's like exercise. You might get a good result in 45 minutes or an hour, but if you do four hours, you're now gonna get a negative result. So it's important for you to understand less is more with lasers. Because if you get too much, it's the same thing as sun. You get a little bit of sun and you get a nice little pink glow and you get some vitamin D production and a nice tan eventually, too much and you'll get this red look. Although Simon, I know you said the sun doesn't come out as much over there as it does for us over here in Southern California. So you may not have as much trouble with sunburns there, but the same thing can happen with a laser if you do too much. All right, let's get into the meat now. I know a lot of you guys probably wanna know it's great to know the theory. How do I actually use this in practice? So laser therapy for sports performance enhancement. So let's show you this. And again, this is a study that I like to give this to my coaches, to my athletes. And I ask them this, hey, 
if there was a way for you to improve your performance in a way that was similar to performance enhancing drugs, but that had no side effects and it was not banned or illegal, would you be interested in that? And what athlete or coach is not interested in that? So this specific study compared different, uh, three different devices, low level pulse laser and high level lasers. So what they found here, key thing is that in the results is that the low powered pulse laser demonstrated less delayed onset muscle soreness. And athletes always complain about that when they train of being sore. When you get a laser on them, they will have less soreness so they can get ready for their next game or for their next training faster. Their creatine kinase activity was also decreased in the low powered laser compared with placebo and high powered laser. And as a matter of fact, the high powered devices, they didn't demonstrate any positive effects in voluntary maximal muscle contraction or in the creatine kinase activity or in delayed onset muscle soreness. They actually found that it increased the creatine kinase level, which the author suggested was potential sign of muscle damage from the high powered laser. So they found that the low powered pulse laser demonstrated better results than either low powered continuous or high powered continuous laser. But this is my favorite study. This is the actual one I hand out. It's four years old, photobiomodulation in human muscle tissue, an advantage in sports performance. So what they found was that if you did laser before or after exercise, that it improved the athlete's performance. And these metrics included fatigue, number of repetitions, torque, and hypertrophy. And what they found is that it also improved muscle mass gained after training. So if you have any bodybuilders or, or power lefters or people going into strongest man or strongest woman competitions or crossfitters, you can use these to help them gain muscle mass, decrease inflammation and oxidative stress and muscle biopsies. Now, what I find so fascinating if you read this whole study is that they had the two groups, they had the laser group and the non-laser group. And they said that the group of, of athletes in the laser group, they said it was as if they had been taking performance enhancing drugs because they had such a statistical improvement over the, over the control group that they even questioned this. Look at the bottom. We raised the question of whether photobiomodulation should even be permitted in athletic competition by international regulatory authorities because they thought laser gave them an unfair advantage. And let's face it, what athlete does not want an unfair advantage? Pretty much all of them want that. And here you can give it to them with no side effects, no risk of being banned. Now let's look at my patient, Zach. So this is Zach, he came in and he had some low back pain and chronic hamstring strains. In the future, we'll actually do some videos to show you guys how to work through this. Uh, but right now I'm gonna show you the simple stuff here. What we did with Zach, he came in, he had been shut down for several weeks because of these hamstring strains. He'd gone to other chiropractors. His mom is a physical therapist as well. Nothing was helping him. All we did with Zach was get him on the laser on the low back and over the hamstrings to get these um, tissues to repair. And we had him activate his muscles while under the laser. So we found that his hamstrings were weak. So guess what I did? I put the laser on the hamstrings and we would work them out while the laser's on there. We would just have him provide resistance against my hands. Uh, he had some balance issues, so I stood him up. The way we tested his balance, stood him up, feet together, eyes closed, he'd start to wobble. And this is one of the top athletes in the United States who his balance was that off. So imagine how that was affecting his performance. When we had him stand heel to toe and close his eyes, he would almost fall over. So what did we do for therapy with him? It was easy. What he was bad at, we stuck the laser on there while he did that exercise. So I had him stand with his eyes together, eyes, feet together, eyes closed. We'd laser, hold the laser here over his head and have him do balance exercises. And as he'd start to wobble, we'd give him a little tap here or tap there to give him feedback. And then we'd put him in the heel to toe and same thing. We'd try to help him balance while we were lasering him. That's pretty much it. It's that simple. And then what we would do to help his sports performance is he would come in twice a week. We would lay him under the laser. I liked using the FX for this one, but you can use any of the lasers. The FX is just faster. We would have one of the diodes rotating over his abdomen, one over the head and neck, and the other over the legs. We would do five minutes to get that laser uh, dosage in there to increase his ATP, increase the nitric oxide to dilate the blood vessels and get the blood to flow, and increase the glutathione to dampen the inflammation that can occur uh, and the free radicals that can occur with running. Zach ended up winning his, his league, his conference, the state championship, the national championship. He won the fast, he ran the fastest time in the 400 meters in the whole United States that year. And he ran the eighth fastest time in US history. 
And he was interviewed even on television about, hey, you ran faster than you ever had before these injuries. And it was the laser that helped them be able to run faster than they ever did. He went down to the Pan Am Games and he and his team set a world record and, and uh, in the 4 by 400 meters and won the gold medal. He's now at the University of Southern California and they've broken that record a couple more times. He still comes in to see me for tune-ups. So what's the protocol? Very simple. You guys can have this, uh, if you have the older FX units, you can use the frequencies of 9, 33, and 42. For newer models where you can do six frequencies, you can use 16, 125, and 279. Or again, down to the bottle, bottom, if you have a handheld model, place it in the stand. Make sure you guys have a stand. I like to do it from the abdomen going down to the legs. And 9, 16, 42, and 53. Five to 10 minutes, that's all you gotta do. And then again, if you wanna just get them to activate their muscles while they're laying on the table, have them just do a little cross call, crawl, pretend they're running. It's that simple, not very complicated. If you're brand new with lasers, you can easily do that. How much do you charge? We charge $45 for that. Um, if you don't wanna charge that much, it, you know, you can add it as an extra 15 or an extra 20. As you build your reputation and people start coming to you specifically for laser, that's when you can start to increase your prices. When I first started, I charged $25 for the laser. And what I actually did is I picked my best patients who are my most loyal patients, and I offered them a, an initial treatment for free. I said, hey, I'm using this new therapy. I want you to give me some feedback into what you think this, how effective you think it is. And normally I would charge I, I told them, normally this would be $25 extra. I'm going to give it to you for free today and I want your feedback. And that's how I started to build my word of mouth. I don't know how your laws are uh, where you're practicing about giving away free care. Where I'm in California, we can do that. But so you want to check with your licensing board, make sure you're in compliance with that. But that's what I gave them was a free trial on there. And then as we got busier, we now keep increasing our prices, kind of like Disneyland has done. Since their demand is high, we were able to increase our prices and still stay fully booked. All right, let's look at this. Another easy one, fractures. So especially if you have athletes, they want to get out of that boot or that cast as fast as possible. Here's all you do for fractures. This is a patient of mine. Now, this patient is diabetic as well, like a, a brittle diabetic. So you know for them, a fracture and being in a boot can be very scary. So when she fractured her ankle and she went to the orthopedic doctor, um, he said, hey, look, you know, you're going to have the risk of some ulcerations in here. Minimum for this kind of a fracture is going to be four to six weeks. With you being diabetic, I'm going to estimate probably double of that. Well, what we did, she's actually my office manager's mom. We were able to get the laser on her immediately after the fracture. When she saw that ortho, first of all, he was surprised. I want to show you this. Well, look at this x-ray. This is just two weeks apart. So here on day one, you can see how clear that fracture is there over, uh, uh, over on the left side. The two-week follow-up, I had to blow up the x-ray because you almost can't see it on there. It's so well healed. It shocked her orthopedic doctor. But I want to show you this. What really shocked the doctor, too, is that this is just two hours apart following her first day in the boot. He was surprised at how little swelling there was in her foot because he said usually with those kind of fractures, he can't even cast them for the first, uh, for the first week, especially in diabetics. But he was able to cast her right off the bat. Now, when she went for a follow-up two weeks later, when he took the cast off, before he did, he told her, now, listen, your leg is probably going to be really yellow and purple and green. It's going to look terrible. You may have some diabetic ulcers there. I don't want you to freak out with it. Well, when he takes the cast off, her foot looks really normal. There's virtually no bruising, virtually no swelling, and he was shocked. And when he looked at the x-rays, he's like, I can't believe how much this is healed. This is I've never seen anything like this. And he kept revising her time frame to where instead of it being you know like 12 weeks, he put her in a in a boot, no, in a walking boot, and then had her using a scooter, and she was completely healed in about six weeks, uh, no, four weeks it was, uh, which was faster than even he had estimated. And what's interesting about this particular orthopedic doctor, he knows me in the town. He's familiar with my reputation. He actually forbids his surgical patients to see me before surgery because he's had too many of them cancel surgeries because of results like this, especially knee surgeries. He's had a lot canceled because of what we got with the laser. So. How do we do this? We've also done this with athletes. This kid, Joe Quintana, he fractured his um, his ankle going up for a rebound, came down, fractured it. He was told that he was going to be out somewhere for uh, 8 to 12 weeks. That's going to be like a full basketball season. So his parents brought him in to see me. We got the laser on him. We got him fully healed within five weeks. He went back to see this podiatric specialist. It's a guy who works with the Los Angeles Lakers Professional uh, Basketball Association, the team. And 
he was blown away at how fast the ankle had healed. He'd never seen one heal in only five weeks. He said it was going to be minimum eight weeks. So this kid got cleared to go back and play. He went on to become his school's all-time leading scorer. His jersey got retired. He got to play in the state championship. And he's now a point guard at Loyola Marymount University. And all of this happened because we got the laser on him. Had we not gotten the laser on that fracture and that kid misses eight to 12 weeks, he misses an entire season of basketball and probably doesn't get seen by the scouts. So being able to use lasers like this can really help uh, your patients a lot. Or let's say they're just trying to get back to work. They've been in a car accident and they fractured their leg and they need to get back as soon as possible. This can help them do it. How do you do it? Here's the easy thing. You have the patient lay down on a table or sit down. If possible, if they're in a boot, have them remove it. Or if they're in a soft cast, have them remove that. If not, if they're in a cast, you simply laser above and below. So let's say if I've got a cast up to here, and my fracture's down here, guess what? I'm gonna laser here because we're going to stimulate those osteoblasts to move down into the rest of the arm here. So uh, we don't have to get it directly on that area. We've done this time and time again, both with Joe and with that previous patient. They were in casts. We simply lasered above it. What are the frequencies that we used? If you have an older FX unit where you can only input three frequencies, I use 2, 20, and 45. Um, for the newer ones, you can add 86, 87, and then just repeat 2 and 45. We do three to five minutes. This usually accelerates the healing of the bone by a minimum of 30%. I often see 50% rate increases or more. If you have a handheld model, use these frequencies, 20, 2, 45, 86, 87, and do five to 10 minutes on there. Place it in the stand so you don't have to stand there and hold it the whole time. Nice and simple, right? And again, if you guys want these slides, just let me know or let Simon know, we'll get them over to you. Now, at this point, a lot of people are going to say, well, do frequencies really matter? And it was a question I had, and I actually asked Dr. Jerome Ruka, who had written the manual on this, you know, what, where were these based off of? And there were some studies and some was anecdotal. So I really wanted to pour myself into research to find out, well, how do frequencies really affect? And so I did find studies with sound frequency and light frequency. This was a cool one from the journal Scientific American that found that cats, the cat purr, has a frequency between 25 and 150 hertz. And they found that those specific frequencies will actually improve bone density and promote healing. So this is why like if a cat is sick or if they've been injured, you know, got hit by a car, they'll often go off in a corner and just be quiet and purr. And those frequencies actually help them to, uh, to stimulate muscles and bones to heal without expending a lot of energy. And again, between 25 and 150 hertz. When we look at music, we know if we listen to music different tones and notes can make us feel happy or sad or energetic. Well, they've done research even that you can see there's on a lot of different specific frequencies. Um, 528 hertz particularly affects testosterone in the rat's brain. 528 hertz is also considered the love frequency because if you get sound or light on a patient's brain in that frequency, they can have a feeling of love and well-being. So many times if I have a depressed patient or a patient with any brain issue, we'll add that frequency into the laser while we have it on their brain. And a lot of patients just say, you know, I feel better. I just feel more comfortable, more relaxed afterwards. So that's with music. Let's look, how about light? Specifically, well, with Alzheimer's, uh, this is for, this is a clinical study, uh, and this one found that 40 hertz light, like if you close the patient's eyes, and let's say you have the laser going to where it's hitting just above the eyes, and it's causing light to go through the eyelid here and, and oscillate at 40 hertz, that it's been shown to actually break up the amyloid load in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So if I have a patient with Alzheimer's, I'll often program in 40 hertz on there, and then I'll position my lasers to where that laser will go on the front. I'll have them close their eyes. I don't have them go in the open eye. I have them close the eyes and it'll still go through the skin here and stimulate the, the brain at that 40 hertz and trigger that uh, amyloid to break apart. Now, if you want to get into more studies of it, we don't have time to go on all this, but this is with, with bone showing two hertz of radiation was the best for bone nodule. And this next one here, if you really want to get into um, frequencies, read this one, the effect of pulsing in low level light therapy. It's 10 years old. So it's been out for a while. They found that different frequencies were stimulating the brain in different ways through possible resonant frequencies. And we look on this one, this tells you some more of the frequencies they found in that particular study to be effective for different conditions. So again, you can always keep it simple and just stick with the 916 4253. That's gonna work for a lot of things. But if you wanna get more specific, you can dive into this 
and you can learn things like 130 hertz was the best for essential tremor or Parkinson's, two hertz best for bone, four hertz best for acute pain, 60 hertz for longer pain, et cetera. So if you want to get more into it, that's fine. But let's get back into a few more case studies uh, that you can use on uh, Monday morning. Oh, real important, if you do pulse a laser between one and 10 hertz, if you guys are doing nutritional therapy, or let's say you have a license where you can also prescribe medications, it's been found that if you pulse that laser between one and 10 hertz, it creates a pumping effect on the cells that can bring nutrients in and also drugs into the cell and also pulp um, waste products out. All right, let's look at a shoulder case study. Very, very easy here. This was a patient of mine who actually, he works for a refrigeration company. He's the main guy for Cacique Cheese here in California. He was lifting a heavy refrigerator. He felt a pop in his left arm and immediate pain. He could barely lift his arm. When he came to my office, it was clear that he had torn a muscle in the shoulder. He couldn't lift it up at all like this. So I ordered an MRI. We got started on laser. My goal here, I was strictly thinking pre-op. So the Erconia lasers have an FDA clearance for pre and post-op. So I told him, hey, you know, you've probably got some torn muscles in there, so you may require surgery, but we can at least use the laser to get this tissue to repair so, so that you will heal faster from the surgery. So what did we do? We get the laser on there. I had him start trying to do little ranges of motion. That's your simple protocol. What were my frequencies? You can use basic frequencies of 9, 16, 42, and 53. Have him do little range of motion where it doesn't increase pain. So for him, if pain increased at that range of motion, well, I only had to move here. I only had to move back and forth. As he continued to get better, I'd have him give little resistance against my arm, try to push out here. And I would tell him only do it to where you can contract the muscle, but I don't want you to increase your pain. I saw him four days in a row that first week. Now, this is his MRI, so you can see what was going on. He had a full thickness tear of the supraspinatus tendon and mild retraction. He had a full thickness tear of the infraspinatus, pro probable tear of the intraarticular portion of the long head of the biceps. So all of these tears. Now, as we kept going on here, he kept getting better. After a few weeks, he started to have full range of motion. He ended up seeing the orthopedic surgeon. She was blown away. She's like, you know, when I look at this MRI, you should not be able to move your shoulder like this. I've never seen this happen before. And she, so she said, you know, why don't you go back and keep doing, um, doing the laser? And we also set him up to go get some PRP injections. So if you do PRP or stem cells or you work with a facility that does it, you can stack laser on top of that and you can enhance the effectiveness of both of them. So we continued that. By the end of a couple of months, he had full range of motion, no pain with movement. If he lifted something heavy, his pain would only be a two. His orthopedic surgeon told him that she had never seen anything like that in 25 years of her career, and she actually canceled his surgery, and she said, listen, if I do the surgery on you, it's going to take you six months to heal from the surgery, and you're going to be off work for six months. She said, right now, you're able to work. So she said, my recommendation to you is why don't you just go to work? If it gets worse, come back in, and we'll do the surgery then. Well, this patient, Eugenio, he comes in about once or twice a month just for tune-ups just to make sure that shoulder still works because he doesn't want to get surgery. He doesn't want to be off for six months. So now you see how he came in initially. We did eight weeks of treatment three times a week. So we made a good profit off of that. And now he's continuing to come in long-term to make sure he, he keeps up with his performance and doesn't get that inflammation to come back and the pain to come back. How do we do it? This is me under my FX. I tore my uh, labrum on a patient. I had a large bodybuilder who was going to compete in the state championship. I went to adjust him, used poor form, heard the labrum tear, felt it tear. So I got right under my laser and I healed myself non-surgically with a laser. If you don't have the FX, you can place it in the stand and do the same thing. So what's the protocol? Very simple. Laser to the, we did three times a week. You can do more frequently or you can do less frequently. This was what I did with that particular patient. We did three times a week. Lasered on these settings, 9, 16, 42, and 53. That's with the older FX. You use the first three. Newer ones, you can add in 125, which that is an acute injury frequency, or 279, which is a chronic injury frequency. So with the new FX, you can do six frequencies. So it saves you a lot of time there. But basically, start with those basic ones, put it in the stand, and get some motion on there. As they get better, give them a hand weight or use resistance against your resistance, or if you have an assistant, or have them do some therapeutic bands. Nice and simple range of motion exercises. I also like to stack the Arconia Percussor with it at the same time. So we'll get the laser on there, and then I'll get in there if I find some trigger points or some knotted up tissue here. We'll use that Percussor at the same time, uh, and we'll use this small circular attachment for deeper tissues. 
optional settings, you could, for acute injury, use these settings of 8, 25, 42, and 125. And for chronic injuries, you can use 8, 25, 42, only one frequency different, 279 on there. So basic things you can do. Here's a study that supports what we do. It basically said that it showed that optimal laser therapy can offer clinically relevant pain relief and initiate a more rapid course of improvement, both alone and in combination with physiotherapy intervention. So when people say there's no research to support it, well, there is. Now, what if you have carpal tunnel? We're gonna do some similar things, two to three times a week. I like to laser over the cervical spine as well. So this is where if you got the FX, you can get one head here and one head over there. Or if you have multiple lasers, you can put one in the stand here and one over there. If you only have one laser, you'll do two uh, separate times, uh, a certain amount of time on the neck and another amount of time over the area of involvement. You can use these basic nerve settings, four, nine, 33, and 60 or you can use the basic ones I showed you on the last slide. Don't feel like one of them is going to be wrong. You can use any of those settings to, to work on carpal tunnel. Um, I do like to also use the chronic injury settings for carpal tunnel, anything that's chronic like that. I do like to use that 8, 25, 42, and 279 approximately five minutes. Now, are these time frames set in stone? No, I start I like to start with the a basic small amount, see if the patient improves enough. If they don't, then I might go a little longer. And then if I've gone for like say eight minutes and I try 10, I'll ask them, did you feel any difference between eight and 10 minutes? If they didn't, then I'm gonna go back to the shorter one that's on there. So there's your settings for older FXs and for newer units. And again, we'll send you these slides so you don't have to memorize them or try to write them down quickly. And I like to percuss her at the same time. Get in there and find those areas where you've got trigger, trigger points, whether it's carpal tunnel or let's say you've got an athlete who's, who's got like what we call little league el elbow or golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. I'll get the laser on the area. And then while the laser's on there, I will use the percussor to work over those tight tissues so it saves you time. When we're looking at carpal tunnel, I'll also look for entrapments up here in the trapezius, also in the anterior portion of the neck, maybe in the axillary region. So just check them out, find out what is tight, use your laser at the same time as, your, as a percussor, or you can use your hands. Nice and simple. Let's look at the cervical spine. So here's a case study of mine. This is Jaime. Jaime was recommended for surgery. So he had all these, he had severe neck pain. He had had an auto accident a decade before he was in. And he had a bad attorney who convinced him, you need to have the surgery. He and the orthopedic doctor convinced him he needed a surgery. He had a spinal fusion and it didn't work for him. So he had this chronic pain for many, many years. Then he had another orthopedic doctor who said, well, you know what? Because of that other surgery, you now have these other disc bulges. You're gonna need to have, um, have a surgery again. He didn't wanna do it. And so he wanted to try the laser to do these uh, protocols to see if we can improve his function because he was getting ridiculous pain into the arms. And um, so he started coming in after the surgeon had convinced him he needed surgery. So we were working under the, the idea we're gonna do a pre-op protocol to help him to speed his recovery. Well, when he had a pre-op evaluation with the orthopedic surgeon and they went over his MRI results, and remember here in the United States, Doctors can be motivated for profit. So a lot of times we have unnecessary surgeries performed here. Fortunately, this doctor was very um, ethical. When he reviewed Jaime's MRI results, he couldn't believe what he saw because he said that the disc bulges were gone. Now, I'm not saying that laser will always get rid of disc bulges, but in this particular case, combining laser with what we did chiropractically, the bulges were gone. He said he had never seen this happen in 30 years in his practice as a surgeon. And so he basically told Jaime, he said, well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is for you, you don't need the surgery and I recommend you just keep seeing that laser doctor because it's working for you. He said, the bad news is for me as a doctor, I was looking forward to that $80,000 payday that I was gonna get from the surgery, but good for you, Jaime. So Jaime was really happy with that. So what do we do for cervical spine? And again, in here, I'm trying to give you the basic things that you can do so you can get up and running very, very easy. It's very simple. So for cervical spine protocol, whether it's a disc bulge, a strain or whatever, here's what you do. Treatment protocol, two or three times a week, use your clinical expertise. Maybe you need them in there more. Maybe you need them in there five days a week. That's fine if they're in a fresh auto accident or in severe pain, you can definitely do that. This is, the, this is what we did for Hyman. We lasered over his cervical spine. I used the settings of four, nine, 33, and 60 for five minutes. Now you could use the basic frequencies. You could use scar tissue on there and you could try it different from one patient to the next. If you've got an old FX, you can use four, nine, and 33. If you have a new one where you can put six of them in there, you can do six frequencies. I would recommend four, nine, 33, 42, 53, and 60. 
Now you could also swap out for 50 and three and 60, the 125 and 279. Because again, you're not gonna go wrong. There's no right or wrong answer. You can also, I found some patients will respond better to certain frequencies than to other. So anytime if you plateau with a patient, try switching up the frequencies and see if that helps them to make a leap of improvement. Now, alternatively, for old injuries, you can laser on the chronic injury settings over the neck and the trapezius muscles, 8, 25, 42, and 279 for five minutes. For older FX, I'd use those ones. For newer ones, you can combo more. Nice and simple. You can percussor at the same time over the tight and painful muscles around the neck using the rounded or flat attachments. Also be sure to percuss other areas such as the scalenes, the traps, etc. I also love to use the adjuster tool at the same time the laser is, is applied. So while I've got it on the head and the neck, I will get in there and I'm going to do a, a webinar um, next month on how to use the laser and the percussor. And you simply just get along there with the adjuster tool and you're going to just use it going from, from T1 all the way up to C1. What you're going to do with that is you're stimulating the firing of afferent mechanoreceptors. So while we fire those mechanoreceptors while the laser's on the neck and on the brain, you're getting those pathways in the brain to recalibrate and to reset. Same thing, we go back, let's look at what one of the things I did with Zach. I would do this with Zach when his balance was off because if I can stimulate those mechanoreceptors and I have the laser on the brain, we're going to get them to recalibrate. That's going to help that person's body know where they are in space better. And whether it's the neck or the lumbar spine or the thoracic spine, I would do the same kind of a thing. I would get the laser on that area, use the adjuster tool as well. And you can still finish with doing a manual adjustment, but I like having those two stacked together. Now, you can also have the patient perform ranges of motion front and back, side to side, doing big circles, or have them press into your hand from side to side, activating those muscles while the laser is applied. Again, making sure that you're not increasing their pain. Lumbar spine, fantastic here. Nothing beats the FX. It is the only laser in the world that has an FDA clearance for chronic low back pain. This is important to understand. They use people who had an average duration of eight years of pain, and they found that if you look at the graph there to the left, you're seeing that doing uh, procedures like eight procedures over four weeks there, you're seeing a rapid drop in the test group. That was the true laser group. The placebo group was an LED device. Now, the key thing here is as the LED device was removed, you see the pain starts to re return. Here, four weeks post-procedure, the Erconia FX patients continue to improve, and eight weeks post-procedure, they continue to improve as well. So there was an average reduction in just those eight sessions of 58% pain, and that was maintained even at the two-month follow-up evaluation after the treatment was removed, whereas with opioids, it was only 14%, and we know all of the side effects that can occur with opioids. So how do you use it? The FX is absolutely amazing. I have an FX, I have a base station, I also have the Zorona. I have all the lasers I, that I, I, you can own in the United States as a chiropractor. The FX is really easy because you literally just put it on the area and you push a button that says low back. It's as simple as that. You have them lie down or the great thing about this new one is that the patient can sit down as you see in the middle picture. You sit down, you put the diodes around there and it's going to do the work for you. Absolutely amazing device. Again, you just push the button. This is an example using the older one here. I was using this on the mid back of the patient. Again, I put it around there, I push the button and it's done. If you have a handheld device, here's your protocol. Let me just get this to the bottom. So if you have a protocol, you're gonna place them for the FX. It's a two times a week for four week trial. In general, we recommend charging $100 a session. So we have patients pay for like an eight session package. Uh, we let them make installments on it. Uh, you literally put the laser around them, push the button, that's it. You let the laser do the work. Now, you can stack other modalities, like you can get the percussor on there, adjuster, electric muscle stimulator, ultrasound, et cetera, at the same time. You can also have the patient do McKenzie protocols or do back exercises while they're doing that simultaneously. So all of these things can be done. If you don't have an FX, if you have a handheld unit, let's go down here lower. You can use these settings. I use 842 and 279. Um, alternatively, if you don't wanna do 20 minutes in, on one patient, you can go for a shorter time. Just understand they're gonna need more sessions total. You're not gonna get the same level in eight visits that you would with the FX. So a handheld, again, at the bottom, I use eight. 25, 42, and 279. Be sure to place the laser on the stand. You don't want to waste your time or your staff's time standing there and holding it. Knee case study. These will be the last case studies we go over here before I turn it over to Simon. But the reason why I picked these ones for you guys is 
I pick the ones that I have the most success with that I absolutely love. We don't have time to get into the brain stuff or into other things. We can do that later. But I was when I was putting this together, I thought, well, what are the things that I can show you guys that right off the bat, you can start helping people your next day in the office without a steep learning curve? So with the knee, this is me. Um, I actually got tripped up going down my stairs. I love my cats, but they love to dart in and out of our legs as we go down the stairs. So I was carrying Christmas decorations down the stairs. My cat darted in front of me. I stopped to try to protect her and I fell and my um, knee, my left knee stayed on the top stair as I did the splits going down the stairs and I landed on my knee. I um, heard a pop, felt a tear, and also injured my toe as well, and um, and I fractured my fractured my toe. So I was in extreme pain, so much pain that when I tried to get up, I almost passed out from the pain. And fortunately, I had my FX at home because I had taught a seminar in San Diego that weekend. And so I had my wife set it up. I got under the FX. Within that, I, I did a 10-minute protocol myself. I dropped the pain by about 40% in that one session on there. That first day, I was actually using a walker to walk. Second day, I was on a crutch. Third day, I was just uh, using a little handheld cane. By the fourth day, I was back in my office just using a brace, walking a little slow. Two weeks later, patients were amazed because they couldn't even tell from my walk. I was back to my normal pace. And about a month later, I was back to being able to do a little jogging. That's my own personal experience with what the laser did for my ligament partial tear. Here we have a patient. Uh, I want to show you this for patients with DJD. So you're going to have patients who have that. Or if they had a... Um, knee replacement and they didn't get a good result. I love failed knee replacement patients because you can do some amazing things with them. I'll laser over their lumbar spine with these settings for about three minutes. And then I'll laser over the knee using the chronic injury settings of 8, 25, 42, and 279. And there's what you can do with other FXs. But what I like to do after I laser it there, and I'll have them give me some resistance, uh, you know, like contracting their quadriceps or their hamstrings, I'll flip them over go face down and I'll get in there with a the percussor while I have the laser on the scar tissue settings and I'll work over the popliteus and over the calves. And when we release those muscles and get the laser on it, every time I do this, what I like to do, this is a tip. When you have these patients come in, have them try to do a squat and a lunge and rate their pain right before, then get them on the laser, face down and face up, Get in there with the percussor in the popliteal fossa and of the, of the calves. Have them stand up after you do this protocol, a five to minute to 10 minute protocol. Try to do a squat and a lunge. Their eyes are going to pop out of their heads and they're going to tell all of their other friends who've had failed knee replacements or who have DJD, hey, this doc did some amazing things. This is, oh, this is my patient, actually my mom. She wanted to avoid a knee replacement surgery. So we actually did laser on her for almost 10 years. We avoided that knee replacement for 10 years until she got rear-ended in a car accident and her knee slammed into the dash and the damage was beyond what we could do with a laser. But she was so happy to come in once or twice a month to not have to undergo knee replacement surgery. That's a simple thing that you did there. So her results were she can go up and down stairs without any pain. She was doing really great, uh, very happy with results. So, and if you wanna see a, a study that supports it, this study said, we conclude low-level laser therapy should be incorporated into standard conservative treatment protocol for symptomatic knee arthritis. This one basically said the same thing. Look at the highlight at the bottom. Treatment with laser is more effective in modulating the inflammatory process underlying osteoarthritis, so degenerative joint disease, when compared with the other therapies. The other therapies were physical therapy and also uh, anti-inflammatory medications, the NSAIDs. So there we see comparisons in laser being superior to medications and physical therapy. All right, my last one I wanna close out here, this will just kind of give you an idea of also, whether it's say it's a knee, a low back, a neck, a shoulder, a carpal tunnel, let's say you've got somebody you know is going to need surgery. Here's how you can do pre-op and post-op. This patient here, Brianna, she's an amazing, amazing athlete. She's a wrestler. Beautiful girl, sweet girl, but you should see her on the wrestling mat. Oh my goodness, she's a beast. So she, before her senior year in high school, she got injured where another uh, athlete hooked her leg and it tore her medial collateral ligament, her uh, ACL and the meniscus. And they said she was gonna be out nine to 12 months, basically her whole senior year. So her parents and she had heard about my voodoo lasers and what I could do with getting people back in 
crazy fast time. So they didn't want to miss her whole senior year because uh, you know she wanted to go to college. So she came in, she had heard about another athlete that I helped win a national championship uh, who had the same injury. And we got him back from a, a surgery that wasn't quite as bad as hers. We got him back in only eight weeks when he was supposed to be out for six months. So here's what we did for this patient. We did a pre-surgical protocol. So this is what you can do with any surgeries. We had her come in two times a week for several weeks before the surgery. The goal here is to get the tissue as healthy as possible. We want to stimulate stem cells, increase glutathione, nitric oxide, ATP to enhance her repair. This is supported by several studies. The lasers have an FDA clearance for that as well. We've done it many times over the year. With the handheld devices, you can actually, with the Accelerate, there is a preset protocol in there that you could push pre-op, and there's one for post-op. So what we did is we placed the laser around the injured knee, we would do the percussor around some of the tissue that was knotted up to break it down beforehand. And we use these chronic scar tissue settings, or sorry, the acute injury settings for five to six minutes. That was protocol one, pre-surgical. Brianna then went in for surgery. What did we do next? As soon as she could walk, we got her out, we got her into the office. We had her uh, use the laser and the Erconia EB Pro. We would put the laser also down here on the same settings. 8, 25, 42, and 125, five to six minutes uh, to get her to heal up faster. The laser also helped the surgical incision to heal faster. When she was getting better and she can actually move it and didn't have to wear that brace, we moved her into the rehab portion of it. The percussor was used around the muscles of the knee, such as the quads, calves, popliteus, et cetera, and we'd have her contract her muscle while under the laser. Um, you could even have them do some bands or some weighted exercise. We had her go to a clean diet. We used the same settings on there also. Now let's show you the results. So what happened with Brianna, normally this orthopedic surgeon wouldn't even let a person do the agility test for nine months. But because Brianna came in and crocodile tears of hers and with her mom, they begged him to run the test uh, only four months later. She got the surgery in August, ran the test in December. He told her no one has ever passed it in four months. The earliest I ever had it was nine months. It's usually 12 months. He said, you are not going to pass it because you have to run, you have to jump, you have to squat, you have to do box jumps, etc. There's no way you're going to pass it, but fine, I'll let you try it. Well, on the side, she was already wrestling without anyone's permission by November. So I told her, hey, don't do that. You don't want to injure anything. Wait until you get cleared by the surgeon. She goes and does this intense agility course and she passes it. The orthopedic surgeon is blown away. He said it's fat, five months faster than anybody had ever passed it. He couldn't believe what happened. He'd never seen it and it was the laser that did it. She goes back, she competes in her senior year. She wins her league. She goes to compete in the conference title and the state title as well and goes off to wrestle in college. So that's where I really want to leave it. There's a few extra protocols that we'll send you in the slides. We don't really have time to get into them. There's going to be a plantar fasciitis protocol of how to do it with the FX. The FX is fantastic with it. You literally just paste, place the patient under it and you push the heel pain protocol. It's as simple as that. The laser does the work. You can use the percussor at the same time as well. Uh, in your slides, we'll also have a, plant, a plantar fasciitis protocol for you if you have just the handheld. The same premises are going to apply. This is what it looks like using the FX, nice and easy to use. You pop it around there, you push the button. The key thing about the FX too is it's very impressive to the patients. Patients always do this under it. They always want to take a picture, a selfie of themselves and post it on their social media. In your slides will also be a peripheral neuropathy um, protocol for there with the base station. We have, don't have time to go over it. There will be an anti-inflammation protocol for you to look at as well for the whole body. But for more info, uh, be sure to join the Facebook group page, Dr. Gare's Laser Therapy and Marketing Secrets. You can also look at facebook.com cold laser forum, and I can be reached at Dr. Gare at Gmail. So with that, Simon, I want to turn this over to you so we can answer some people's questions. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, Kirk. That was sure. um, fantastic. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I have received some um, messages on my WhatsApp, which is beeping away All right. some of our <laughs> customers who said it, uh, it was very good, very informative. Thank you. Thank um, you. First question here. Uh, hi, Kirk. Fantastic webinar. Can you advise me on best frequencies to use for chronic back pain and also radiculopathies with EVRL and also FX635? Sure, sure, sure. So for How back pain. Yeah, yeah. For for back pain, um, I like I like the eight, twenty five, forty two, and two seventy nine when it's chronic. Those are the ones that I like to program in there. Whether it's the EVRL, or it's the Accelerate, or the PL Touch, I still use those same frequencies. 
Now, let's say if you have a base station and you have two of them, I do like to stack the um, EVRL along with an accelerate. I just find that you get those, you know, multiple lasers on there at the same time and you get an even more pronounced result on it. And particularly EVRL, uh, even that Dr. Silverman did that study showing it is more effective than the, than the accelerate. So that's what I would use. I went back to the peripheral neuropathy protocol here. So with any kind of neuropathies, I'll use this down here. Look at like diabetic neuropathy. Now, where you see 3.9, the older Raconia lasers you used to be able to put in a decimal on there. Uh, in Dr. Jerome's older manual, you'll see that. So with the newer ones, I would use, round that up to four. So I like to use for any kind of neuropathy, radiculopathy. I'll also put in four, 728, 833, and 2720. I might use that one, or I might just use the basic nerve settings of four, nine, 33 and 60. So those are some of the ones I found to be effective. And again, sometimes you got to change it up on a patient. If you get to a plateau and you're not seeing as much of a response in that patient as you think you should have, then try some different frequencies on there and see if that gets you past that plateau. That's great. Thanks for that, Kirk. We can also provide um, on the email separate settings for the FX as well. Yeah. Um, that was actually coming from a chap who actually does have the EVRL. Awesome. And Max loves it and is very interested in also adding the FX635 to his portfolio. That's I think fantastic. that they'll actually, um, they'll actually help each other very well, which I'm sure you agree. They do. They do, absolutely. And, and it also, as you get busier, like when I first started, I had one laser. I had the PL5, which is the, is the predecessor to the PL Touch. But as I got busier, then I got bogged down because I had one laser, so I could only do one patient at a time. I traded that laser in and upgraded to a base station where I had three lasers because then I could have, let's say I could have one patient in a room in a stand with a laser going on a fracture setting. And I could have another stand and another laser in a, in a room with a patient on a uh, chronic low back pain setting. And then I could be in another room with a handheld laser doing balance exercises while I'm lasering the patient's brain or having them do, you know, movement types of patterns while I'm lasering their brain, doing more of an active laser protocol that we don't have time to show you now. But the more lasers you have, the more revenue you can make in a given amount of time. Because now, I, instead of seeing one patient, say, every five or 10 minutes, I was seeing three patients in every five minutes. So it tripled my revenue. Would you all, this is just a question for me, actually, before I go mm -hmm. on to the other ones. Um, when you do the treatments with the FX, uh, whether you're using it on the brain, whether you're using it on the back or, or, or multiple other conditions, would you also use a handheld as well at the same time? If I it's do. The EVRL as well? Yes, I do actually stack that quite a quite a bit, um, especially if, if I want to program in other frequencies. So let's say that I've got um, a patient who's got chronic low back pain and they've also got some type of issue with their adrenals. Then I would also do my back pain settings on there. I might put the laser in a stand, like say the EVRL on an adrenal setting, or let's say they've got an infection going on at the same time they're sick. Well, then I'm gonna put the EVRL on there on some immune support settings at the same time. Or let's say I'm doing um, some settings to support the brain and I have a patient who has Hashimoto's, the thyroid condition. I'd have one going on the brain here, and I might also put one around the thyroid on some thyroid support type of settings there. Or if they've got a gut dysfunction, let's say I've got a patient who has a leaky gut, intestinal permeability, and they've got difficulty swallowing. They say, uh, hey, you know what? I can't swallow pills. Uh, I always need them to be in powder or liquid form. Well, then I might have them do the laser on the brain. Well, I've got one on the gut. Usually I like to do the EVRL because of that antimicrobial uh, effect that it has. And I might have them activating their vagus nerve at the same time, which could be as simple as just tilting their head back and gargling while I've got a laser on the brain, laser on the abdomen, and they're doing something active at the same time. And then it saves my it saves my time. I can now do a, a protocol that might have taken 15 or 20 minutes. I've now done it all in five minutes or seven minutes. Brilliant. Plus, I suppose, if you're treating a certain area with the FX, uh, you can also use the handheld to to do range of motion or absolutely um, you know any sort of pressure therapies. Absolutely. Correct. Okay. And next question we have. Uh, also, what would you recommend? What would you recommend in terms of usual treatment time for MSK therapies? Usually, I start most of my patients are around the five to seven minute mark. That's what it is for most of the cases. Now, obviously, you're going to have some people. Let's say they've got a fresh injury, like an athlete comes in with a hamstring, like a torn hamstring or a fresh auto accident. Then we might go longer to, like, say, a 10 minute or something like that. Um, but on average, majority of my patients are going to be in that five to seven minute minute mark is what we're usually doing it with them 
So what would you do by way of treatment time? Because you'd be you'd be obviously doing your standard chiropractic therapies as well as the laser. Yeah, we stack them at the same time. So I really I really don't use ultrasound or electric stimulation anymore. There's maybe less than 1% of patients want that at the same time. Uh, even though I could charge extra for it, I just I like to make everything streamlined and neat. So if a patient comes into my office, uh, let's say they already have been there, uh, they'll come in, I'll have them I'd ask them how they're doing, might have them do a squat or a lunge or show me their range of motion or whatever is their painful part. And then I'll set them down. Let's say they're in for a neck problem. I'll set them down either under the FX or under the um, under a handheld laser. I'll get it on the area and I'll go right into using the percussor or the adjuster or having my staff using the percussor tool on them. So we're doing it simultaneously. Again, five to six minutes under the laser and that at the same time. And then I will finish with the adjustment, which how long does an adjustment take? You know, a minute, two minutes. So it doesn't really take up a lot of time. It doesn't bog you down. If anything, it streamlines things because now I don't have someone for 15 minutes on hot packs and electric stimulation. They're coming right in. We go through the laser. We get the adjustment. They're used to it. And there are some advanced protocols we can show some other time of how you can go through to recalibrate muscles that are even faster, but they're really hard to do through a webinar. No, that's great. Thanks very much for that. Mm -hmm. um, another question here. Uh, what frequencies would you use for plantar fasciitis and peripheral neuropathy using a handheld? We can obviously okay. answer that, but I'll let, I'll let you go through that. Yeah. Yeah. With plantar fasciitis, if you've got the FX, you just push the button for heel pain. It's as simple as that. If you don't, and you should be able to still see my slide up there, peripheral neuropathy protocol with base station. Uh, this one tells you what you can what you can do with a handheld is peripheral neuropathy. Uh, you can do the basic ones of either 9, 16, 42, 53, or 4, 9, 33, 60, or the 4, 7, 28, 8, 33, and 27, 20. With plantar fasciitis, I usually, since it's usually a chronic condition, I'll go into the chronic settings. Again, 8, 25, 42, 279. You're going to see a lot of things repeating. So don't think of just the condition name. Think about what's going on. So if I have a chronic condition, whether that be plantar fasciitis or carpal tunnel, I use the chronic injury settings. If I have a fresh one, like a fresh hamstring strain, I'll use the acute injury settings. Um, and you can always use the basic settings anytime you want. So that's a real simple way to, to think about these things. Okay, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Eva, this, uh, that's not really a question. This was really fantastic. Thanks, Kirk. Fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. Somebody else, thanks for your workshop. Um, here we are. What setting would you use for um, Charcot Maria Tooth? I've never heard okay. of that, but I'm sure you have. Yeah, so that one, that's more of a chronic condition. So I would, again, go back, since it's chronic, I'd use those chronic settings. I know in Dr. Raruka's manual, I think I left it downstairs, he has a specific setting possibly for that but I, I would look at that um or even some of the like the bone settings that i showed you early earlier i would look at even the the bone setting for those ones and i don't have that memorized off the top of my head so again i'm going to spend majority of my day in five settings that i have memorized and pre-programmed in my lasers and then for one like that i would go to dr ruka's manual um which again how often do i have to go to his manual maybe once or twice a month for something that's an outlier on there but any chronic condition, I'll use those chronic settings of 8, 25, 42, and 279. You can't go wrong with those. Yeah, I think anybody, if they want to purchase Dr. Raruka's book, uh, if they get in touch with the office, um, and uh, that also enables you to go direct to Dr. Raruka if you actually have any questions uh, mm -hmm. from anything he actually uh, publishes in the book. Yeah. Um, next one just says, brilliant. And another just one, thank you, Kirk. And I even get a thank you. Thank you, Simon. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, unless we get any more in the next couple of minutes, uh, just to reiterate again, we will be sending a video link, um, if not later today, because the office is usually very, uh, they show a lot of urgency across here. Um, it'll be tomorrow morning. Uh, so any further questions that you have, uh, we can obviously try our best to answer them. Um, our own clinical consultant, Rob Sullivan, um, and we can also, we're in regular contact with Dr. Gare as well, so we can put any questions over to him. Um, I've introduced him to WhatsApp now, so he'll That's probably right. <laughs> easy to find. Me. Um, so yeah, well, thank you very much, everybody else. Jeanette's just said thank you very much as well. Uh, thanks very much for, for, uh, for coming on. And Dr. Gare, thank you very much for your time. It's hugely appreciated. And well, I think not just your experience, but your sheer enthusiasm 
uh, and energy. Um, I think you can sometimes tell when somebody has something and they're going through the motions, but you can tell right. you actually really enjoy not just using the lasers, but really integrating them into your practice. So thank you very much for that. I do. It's a lot of fun. I actually have to calm myself down when I'm talking on these things because I can get you know where I want to talk really fast and tell you guys everything at once because I just find it so exciting. No, I think um, in, in the short time that we've been in the UK market, uh, a lot of the chiropractors here that have actually come on board with it uh, say that they can't actually understand how they got by without them. It's made oh, I tell you, it's in the I, scope of practice. I couldn't imagine. I had when I had my my one laser uh, from you know 2004 to 2008. I had it where in 2008 the battery just aged out and it needed to be replaced, and all of a sudden it died in practice. I had a week where I had no laser. I didn't know what I was, I, I didn't know how to treat people anymore. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And I, you know, I, that's when I traded it in and I had coaches bringing in athletes like, yeah, yeah, hey, Dr. Gary, we got this athlete. He's got a game tonight. I'm like, I don't have a laser. Like, what do you mean you don't have a laser? You need more lasers. You can't be without one. And I'm like, I know, I know. I always need a, need a backup. And it's true. Once you use them, you're like, how did I ever exist without these before? And I love chiropractic. I love what we can do with chiropractic. It's not to take away anything from it, but when you add laser on top of it, it's just like mind blowing what you can achieve. I'm going to yeah, jump yeah. in there as well, because um, I, ha I have the same issue because I mean, I I'm not a chiropractor. Um, mm -hmm. Nine years ago, I reached every day for a prescription pad, and I mm, never saw yeah. my patient smile le leaving the room. <laughs> now I now I reach for a laser, and sometimes you know you can't get rid of them because they're right. as excited as I am. And I mean, I, I think for me, watching you today has been absolutely great because I mean, Simon sometimes has to say to me, Robert, calm down, you're getting too excited. <laughs> and I mean, it's nice to know that you know you've been doing yeah, this with like, lasers a lot longer yeah. than I have, and yeah. it's nice to see that you know you're still as excited about them as I am. And I'm only years on, I yeah. think eight, eight, eight years in. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I can't practice without them. And I think the mm -hmm. one thing that I would say about lasers is I'm actually a doctor now. Before I was just a prostitute for a drug company. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. thanks for the lecture. Oh, thank you. Great point there. And I think you probably experienced the same thing I have is that when people get the laser therapy right off the bat, they're like, hey, can I bring in my husband can i bring in my grandmother can i bring in my this or that they're asking me if they can bring people in as i imagine you probably have people already thinking of who else they can refer in yeah, which yeah. it doesn't really happen with people wanting to send in their friends for surgery right well see my my <laughs> great thing is my, my my favorite one was my patient came and she said do you mind if i bring in my cat yes that's uh, what... and you know um the, the the cat got treated but i mean yeah, you were right. saying there about about surgery simon knows this um Five years ago, I was doing up to um, five, 500 uh, joint replacements every single year. Uh, oh since I've got this laser, I'm down now to joint replacements that actually need to be done. Because right. a lot of the time when I would replace a joint, we'd look at the periarticular tissue, uh, we'd look at the, the joint surfaces, et cetera, et cetera. And we'd say, shit, like there's not enough damage there to replace the joint, but mm -hmm. I've gone and replaced it. So now mm -hmm. if somebody comes to me and they have a pain, they're looking for surgery, the first thing I'm gonna do is introduce the laser. And I think really, mm -hmm. 89, 90% of the patients I see, they don't need surgery. Right. They just need rehab and prehab. Mm -hmm. I agreed. Totally agree there. Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, that was uh, Robert Sullivan there, by the way. It's our clinical consultant over here. Uh, I think the balance that we've got it between our UK and Irish uh, uh, webinars and uh, our US ones with Dr. Gare and, uh, and Dr. Silverman, I think they complement each other extremely well. And I think it um, it, it gives off a very good aura to our uh, to our attendees as well. So thank you guys, all of you, for that. Um, just one, this isn't a question for Dr. Gare, but somebody's asking if they can um, they can get a CPD certification. Uh, yeah, a, a certificate actually gets sent out um, automatically with the uh, with the webinar after it actually finishes. Um, so another one to thank you for you, Dr. Gare. And, yeah, um, I'll just leave you, everybody with, with one note. And when I first became involved with the pain lasers July last year, we had a Dr. Trevor Berry that came over to do a, a neuro seminar for us. Um, what actually hit me with that was um, one of the things he said, and I'm sure um, Dr. Gare and Robert, you both um, go along with this, was we're asked why did we actually bring these lasers on board? 
Uh, we didn't even know initially whether we thought we had lasers, but it was true lasers, but it was infrared or it was LED. We didn't know the differences between photothermal reactions and photochemical uh, reactions. Right. And we will carry on educating on that. But he actually said, people ask me, why did I bring by the lasers? Was it because I increased my efficacy levels and scope of practice? Yes. Was it because I um, it helped my business commercially and I made more money? Well, yes. But he said the real reason I actually bought it initially was when we actually when I actually looked at the Konya's depth of research and the science behind it, and I wanted to actually get it for myself, my close family, my friends, people close to me. The add-on effect of that is I can introduce it into my practice and give everybody the same treatment. But I'm sure you'd probably reiterate that as well. Yeah, that was the same thing for me. And also for me was I, I was looking at certain athletes that we would see get better or do certain things that other people weren't doing. I'm like, well, what what are they doing? And at, at the time, 2004, one of the top athletes in the world at that time was you know Lance Armstrong. And so I was curious, well, what is Lance doing? And we, now, now we know he was doing some other things on the side too, but I saw that he was getting laser therapy from Dr. Jeff Spencer. So I'm like, well, I wanna go and learn what Dr. Jeff Spencer is doing. And the big thing that he was doing, cause we know that Lance did whatever he could to win and to give himself an unfair advantage over other people. And one of the things he considered gave him an unfair advantage was doing the laser therapy. And he did it every day before he would race and afterwards and for every injury. So I thought if it's good enough for at that time, who we thought was one of the top athletes in the world. And when I saw who else Dr. Spencer was working with and how fast he could get people better and how much they could perform better, that was it for me. I'm like, if I can help people and if I can help them to perform better, avoid surgeries, that's what made it uh, work for me was seeing, seeing that proof in the results that were being uh, obtained with specifically Erconia lasers. And that's why I jumped on board with it because I, I had been saved from a surgery when I was playing high school American football and uh, from a, by a chiropractor. And I, wa I saw this as an opportunity for me to save other athletes too, that if I stacked laser and chiropractic and brought it to youth athlete, athletes, how many of those could I save from an unnecessary surgery? And how many of those could I enhance their performance and then maybe get them to get a scholarship to college and maybe get them to play in the pros, which has happened. I have a lot of athletes that I've worked with who are playing in the pros now. And it's really a lot of fun to watch somebody that I've worked with when they were a 14 or 15 year old kid now be a multimillionaire. <laughs> like the one kid that I showed you treating, he signed, I think he had a $7 million signing bonus. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know? So, and laser was part of what helped get him there. So that's a big reason why I jumped on board with it. In addition to all the other things that uh, Dr. Barry said. Yep, no, I agree. And one last thing before we go, just to tell a similar story, uh, Dr. Gare, uh, we have a clinic who's actually a podiatry clinic that Robert knows down in the South of England. And this was just before the Rio Paralympics, the last one. Yeah. Um, there was a <clears throat> competitor called Georgie Hermitage. Um, she was a customer to this specific podiatry clinic in Alton in Hampshire. And they actually lent her their accelerate at the time leading up to the Olympics. She did prehab on herself just to prepare her tissue, prepare her muscles, et cetera, better. So limiting the chances of injury in the first place. Uh, she also lasered herself after she came in again, just to um, enhance the recuperation period. And uh, yeah, she went on to win, uh, I think it was three golds and a silver. And I'm not Amazing. saying that's down to the lasers. What I'm saying is it definitely helped um, her enter into more events. It helped her relaxation. It helped her recuperation. Absolutely. Um, and it limited the opportunities for injuries to occur in the first place. Yeah, and I could say from firsthand experience too, I actually, I still play in, weekend warrior uh american flag football tournaments and i take my laser with me and i laser myself and my teammates before the games and if somebody goes down i get the laser right on them and i use the laser on myself what happened for me was when i was about i think it was i was about 33 34 i would play in these tournaments and i had played high school and college football and i was a quarterback so i was the one who was throwing the ball and I had a really strong arm, but when I was about 33, 34, it started just declining really rapidly and I wasn't playing well. And in this one tournament, I was just playing really terribly to where my, my teammates were like, what's wrong with you? We've never seen you play like this. I'm like, I don't know. I can't throw the, I can't get this, the, the velocity on the ball anymore. Maybe I need to, to quit. Well, I go to a seminar and Dr. Jeff Spencer does laser on me and I had had this weakness 
to where when I bench press, I literally would do about you know half the weight with my right arm as with the left. After doing that, I went to the gym and I was doing almost even weight right off the bat. The next tournament I played in, I was throwing the ball so hard that you could actually hear the ball whistle as it traveled through the air. And now my teammates were saying, oh my God, what the hell happened to you? It's like you went back in a time machine, like I'm Benjamin Button or something. And so even the last tournament I played in, um, which was last year, I was still throwing the ball really hard to where they couldn't believe that if, you know, 49 years old, I'm still putting that kind of zip on the ball. And, you know, maybe I don't throw as far as I did when I was 20, but I still throw it pretty darn far and pretty darn hard. And it's thanks to the laser, you know, that's just amazing. I actually went to a reunion with a lot of my uh, high school football teammates and also ones who'd even graduated before me and after me. And so the funny story on this one is we went back to our high school and I'm standing there. There's a fence that's about six and a half feet high. And I'm asking the coach, hey, you guys got a key so I can come through there? They're like, no, you got to go all the way down there and then come over this way to get to here. And I looked at them like, and at the time I was what, I think it was 48 or 47. And there were, there were people there who were only in their 20s who had graduated from this school. We were well known for our football program. So they were much younger than me. And I looked at it and they're walking that way. I just scaled the fence. I scaled it, hopped over and jumped down. And all these younger guys and guys who were my age, their jaws dropped. They're like, how the hell did you do that? How the hell did you scale that fence like that? They're like, I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't even be able to climb up. And then if I tried to, I wouldn't be able to get out of the bed for a week. And I told them, it's my lasers, you know, I use the lasers as like the fountain of youth. At 50, I don't feel 50. I feel much younger than 50. And I feel like I can, you know, I need less sleep now than I was when I, when I was in my 20s. And I, I say that's a lot because of the, the lasers, you know, I don't use coffee. I don't use any stimulants at all. And, um, it's due to the lasers. So that's why I can't speak enough about them. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for sharing that. Um, I think we all agree and we always try to keep these things pretty informal, even though there's a serious message to be delivered. Right. Uh, when I first came across Aconia, obviously, um, you know, they've come so far, as you've seen, from being a, a family business in Steve Shanks, Kevin Tusek's garage into what they've become now. And you know, we have over 16,000 of our, um, our lasers there in North America alone, and we're growing nicely throughout Europe, and long may that continue. Um, developing our own style, but also learning from you guys as well is, um, is, is a definite bonus. So uh, sure. thank you again for that, Kirk. You're welcome. Um, Thanks for having me. Comment, inspirations, inspirational seminar as well from Max. That's great. Great. Okay, on that note, thank you very much, and thank you everybody for who came onto the call and attended. Um, we're all going through very difficult times at the minute with regard to the COVID-19 situation. Um, so this is a time where we stick together. We'll always try to deliver quality education. We'll always try to grow through that. Um, and yeah, that's our ethos and we will stick to it. So stay safe, everybody. Stay well and speak to you all very soon. Thanks, Kate. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.